Okay, so in this week's guitar lesson, we're going to learn an acoustic blues that's played in the 1-5-4 chord format. I'll explain what that means as we get into this. But this is a great way to practice playing because you have an end goal. You have a song that you can learn and perform for other people, or you can sit around and play it by yourself. But it's a lot more meaningful when you have a song versus just learning a scale or something that doesn't really have any context. And so uh, as we go through this video, um, just remember there's more to it than just memorizing how to play the song. That's part of the story, but the other part is knowing the why behind the notes so that you can improvise and write your own compositions like this. So we're going to break all that down and explain how to play them and I'll explain where the notes come from as we get into this. I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're going to go through the first half. If you'd like to learn the second half and get the tablature and also access the on-screen tab viewer, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP461. Okay. Let's talk about this song. Now this song is played in the key of A, and it's a 1-5-4 chord format, which means uh, we're going to start with the 1 chord, then we go right to the 5 chord, and then the 4 chord. Your typical blues is 1-4-5. You have your 1-4-5, right? But this time we've just sort of switched the order of the 5 and the 4. I can think of one song right off the top of my head that is in this format, which is the song Key to the Highway, the old Muddy Waters song. Uh, that's a 1-5-4. There's lots of other blues songs that are in that format. And just remember, you don't have to follow any formula. Sometimes I get questions on, well, that song isn't just 12 bars, that's an 8-bar song, or that's a, that song has a 16-bar. You know, you can sort of, there's no formula. There's just sort of the standard, which is 12 bars, but you can put as many bars as you want. You can also switch the order of the chords. Okay, we're playing this in the key of A. And uh, actually, let's take a listen to this first part so we get it in our ear and then we'll break it down. Okay, so everything I'm going to be playing is really either minor or major pentatonic scale for the key of A. So it's either going to be A minor pentatonic scale or A major pentatonic scale. I'm talking about all the lead, the licks and things. They're all coming from one of those two places. And in this lesson, we're going to be blending the two in a few spots and uh, trying to make that as seamless as possible. So anyway, just keep that in mind. That's where all the notes are coming from. Because the song's in the key of A, that's where we're going to be at. Okay, the first thing... That's the first lick. That's a call. And then the response to that is the rhythm. So this call is coming out of the A chord here, which uses the E shape from the cage system. So I'm barring on the fifth fret, but you can look at these three fingers and they're making up what would be the E chord. Think of your E chord in first position. If you were to reposition that and play it up here, you're playing an A chord. So that's why we call it that. So this first little lick is really just the top part of that bar chord, which would be an A triad up here. Now I'm playing this, the notes are coming from the A major pentatonic scale pattern two. So that would be those notes. So we're gonna slide into the fifth fret, strings one and two, uh, barring that with our index finger, second string, first, back to the second, and then strings two and three on the seventh fret, and then bar strings two and three on the fifth fret, with a hammer onto the sixth uh, fret third string. Now, why did I go to this? Because somebody's gonna go, wait, wait, that note's not in minor pentatonic scale. It's not, but it is in major pentatonic scale pattern one. Right? So that note, this is an interesting thing because you have one note that's minor pentatonic, one that's major, but in actual fact, that's just playing the four chord. So one typical move that you hear in the blues when you're hanging out on a chord for a while is you can go back and forth between the one and the four chord. So if I were to play the D chord, which is our four chord, and use the A shape, but only play strings two and three, that's where that's coming from. So anyway, I didn't, I don't want to get too into the weeds there, but that's what's going on with that little part for that. And then we do the hammer on and build the bottom part of the triad. Now, this is a blues 101. You gotta get this because it's in everything. Piano players do it in the blues, guitar players do it. And think about it in relation to this chord shape. So if you're playing a blues using this chord shape, don't even think about the key. Let's just think about shapes for now. You hear that all the time, right? If I was playing in G. 
right? So anyway, that's just a lick you need to know. And then we go to the response. This you also need to know. This is a rhythm that's just a shuffle rhythm. We're gonna be on strings five and four, the open fifth string, and then the fourth string, uh, second fret. So playing those two notes, and then I use my pinky up here on the fourth fret, fourth string. You can use your ring finger. The old blue shuffle in A. So, whoops, let's try that again. Call. So the timing of that. And all I'm doing it, by going back and forth, since I don't have two necks and then you know four arms, I can't play the rhythm and the lead at the same time, so I have to go back and forth. And that's just sort of a strategy uh, when you're playing by yourself like this, is to play a little lead thing and then go into where the rhythm part would be. It just sort of defines it for the listener. Okay, so now we're going to the five chord and we play. Right? Now this lick, all played on the second string. So we're gonna start here on the seventh fret, second string. We're gonna do half bend. Half bend and release. And then we're gonna go fifth fret to the seventh fret by a hammer on. And then back to the fifth fret, second string. And then that last note there, I did a little hammer on again to the seventh fret, second string. So now where is that coming from? Again, it's major pentatonic scale pattern two, right? These notes. But when I do a half bend, I'm bending up one fret. The half bend is just going up one fret. And that note is in the minor pentatonic scale. That's why it's got that bluesy flavor to it. And then I play the E chord after that. That's the response. Now the E chord there is the same as your C chord. Think of your C chord in first position. If I were to move that up where my ring finger is on the seventh fret, but then I put in my pinky on that seventh fret third string, only play the middle four strings. Actually, when I played that, I hit the open sixth string and then I played that. That's an E7 chord. Right? So then after that, we go to the four chord. Let's listen to it and then we'll break it down. So to get to the four chord from this E7, I just went like this. Just walked it straight down. That's the E7. We're gonna go down a half step and then down another half step. So E7 down to a D7. Uh, so. Um, now, once we're down to the D7, I came up here and played uh, a response to that. Now, let's listen to it because there's kind of a lot to this part. This is probably the most complicated part in the whole thing. We'll listen to it and then we'll break it down. Okay, so we're starting off major pentatonic scale pattern two with those two notes, and but then I go right into minor pentatonic scale which is the fifth fret, third string. So it starts off seventh fret, second string, down to the fifth fret, and then fifth fret, third string, and then down to the seventh fret, fourth string. So, and you can tell it starts off kind of happy, major, and then it switches gears into that minor. It's kind of a cool twist to me. Now after that, That's the next lick. Now we're gonna look at this lick in groups of three. There's a, a series of triplets. That's the first one. So that's gonna be barring the first two strings. Now this is gonna be mixing the minor and the major pentatonic scale in different spots. So we're gonna start off minor pentatonic scale, classic blues lick, bar the first two strings on the fifth fret. And then we're gonna play seventh fret, third string, a bend. Now I can't do a full bend on an acoustic guitar, so I do bend it as far as I can. And then we play strings two and then one. So that's the first group of three. Now the next group of three goes. So that's eighth fret, second string, fifth fret, first string, seventh fret, second string. So you can see minor pentatonic scale pattern one. That note's major pentatonic scale pattern two. We're right in between the two. We're mixing them. Now the next group goes like this. And that's a quick ham or quick pull off between the sixth fret and the fifth fret on the first string. Eighth fret, second string again, fifth fret, second string. 
So we have first group, second group, third group, and then another little, uh, this time it's a slide, it's from the eighth fret third string down to the seventh fret, fifth fret third string, seventh fret fourth string. So let's piece all those triplets together. We have Now that would be great practice just to get that under your belt because once you can play that, you can work that lick into anything. It's a really cool blues lick. I mean, you could work that into just about anything. It would work in country too, but now we end with this little hammer on. Same thing we already did, barring the first two strings of the fifth fret. Uh, and then hammering onto the sixth fret third string. And then after that lick, I come back to the rhythm. Same rhythm we did before. Now, this is where the song wraps up, or the first time through, we go back to the E, and then back to the A, and then there's the turnaround. Let's listen to this last part, and then we'll break that down. So what I played here is a series of triplets, there's another series of triplets, but we're going to be playing, in this instance, we're going to be playing E minor pentatonic scale pattern 2. So I'll explain it in just a minute. Let's connect that to our E chord. So we're going to play our E chord down here, actually we're not going to even play the chord, we're going to go into this little lick here. Let me show you the lick. Middle finger comes up here to the 4th fret 3rd string, index finger 3rd uh, fret 2nd string. So you pick that 3rd string and then you do up strokes on strings 2 and 3 like this. So that's how I play it. Now the first time through, I played 5 of them. So let's take it from that A rhythm. Hear that? So it's A rhythm, let's do that again. And then I did a group of three. So the first time it was five of them, the second time it was three. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. And then we slide down to the second fret and then do a hammer on on the open open third string to the first fret, first fret third string. Now that's a kind of a John Lee Hooker type lick. That's another great blues lick. Even though we're playing this song in the key of A, and most of everything, really everything we've done up to this point has been A minor or major pentatonic scale for the five chord. It's okay, or it's actually okay for any of the chords, but in this one case, I like to slip out of the minor pentatonic scale for the key of the song and just play the minor pentatonic scale for that chord. So the chord is an E chord. So I played that lick in an E minor pentatonic lick. And the way that I wrap that up goes down to that low 6th string and then we come back to the to the 1 chord. That's a quick, uh, that's the 6th string, the E string, slide it up to the 4th fret and then we're going to play strings 5 and 4, that little power chord there on the 2nd fret, the 4th fret 2nd string with the open 5th string, which is your A note. And that gets us back to the one chord. Now we're gonna do the turnaround. Great blues turnaround. I use this one all the time. Uh, both fingers are on the fifth fret here, strings four and one. Now I use my pick on the fourth string my, and I pluck with my ring finger on the first string. You don't have to do it that way. You could use your pick for, for both of them. But watch this, the only finger that moves is that fourth string. It walks down like this. So we're gonna go four, one, four, four, one, four, four, one, four. And then we come down again. It goes down again to the second fret this time. But I let my ring finger go from that fifth fret and I play the open first string. So all together you have. I mean, you've heard that in so many uh, ZZ Top songs, right? And then the, the last little 5 chord, 
I did like an E9 and I played it up here. So you can play this chord up up in position. Now we played the E7 already up here. It's the same thing. You can just take, um, reposition your fingers. So think of your D7 chord in first position. If you were to play that chord up here where you've got your middle finger on the seventh fret fifth string, it would look like that. Now just take your pinky and add that to that seventh fret second string. But we're gonna start it a half step up and then come down to it. So, great little turnaround. And uh, so that's really what we have for this first half. Now there's another whole part and you know, and it's just as exciting, a whole new set of licks. Let me back up and I'll play through this one more time so you have one final version of it and then we'll see you in the second part.